After one year, two years, ten years without children, and then she become pregnant. One day at work, when she stepped up the stairs, she felt tired and could not take any breath. Then, Dr. Ahmed meet her and ask some questions to take her history. She is a 33 years old, in her seventh gestational week, admitted to ER, complaining of shortness of breath for one month, but no chest pain or cough, no fever, no loss of appetite or loss of weight. Patient was admitted to the medical college hospital two weeks ago for the same complaint. Then, signed discharge against medical advice. Echo was done and showed pericardial effusion. On physical examination, they found left supraclavicular lymph node enlargement, which make Dr. Ahmed think of infection such as typhoid fever, TB, mononucleosis, cytomegalovirus, or it may be autoimmune disease like systemic lupus erythromatous, rheumatoid arthritis, or dermatomyositis, or it may be drug reaction or malignancy. And his first diagnosis came to his mind was lymphoma. Soon later, another doctor arrived and asked about an exogenal biopsy of the lymph node and microscopic examination for pleural effusion spacement. So, an excisional biopsy was taken. When the pathologist saw the spacement, he described as a gross picture of multiple fragment measured 3 by 2 cm and totally submitted in one cassette. And in the microscopic examination shows, sections revealed nodal effacement by diffuse ill-defined atypical lymphoid cell. Population mostly of large cell type, the proliferated neoplastic cell expressed market, and the degree of the cellular anaplastic change in addition to presence of the enormous mono, bi, and multinucleated cells. And the immunohistochemistry staining is done for CD20, CD15, CD30, EMA, and ALK. And the lymphoid cells showed that diffuse positive staining of CD20, but the others is negative. There is two slides for microscopic examination of pleural effusion spacement, and the report is numerous lymphoid cells, mostly small lymphocyte, but many enlarged, atypical mononuclear and binucleated cell seen, some enlarged popcorn type cells, and eosinophilus also noted. So, consistent with a lymphoma, the doctors start to think about Hodgkin, and by the excisional lymph node biopsy, it may document the diagnosis. Then, after looking of all the reports, the two doctors discuss the case and think of the differential diagnosis and listed it to exclude. So it could be T-cell rich large B-cell lymphoma variant of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And this type is diffuse infiltrate type without sclerosing or nodularity, scattered large mononuclear neoplastic cells in a background of a small reactive lymphocyte that are almost all T-cells. Large neoplastic cells are positive for CD45 and CD20, but negative for CD15 and CD30. Tumor cells do not express fascine. And what about follicular lymphoma? but it characterized by the patient are usually older than 40 years, variable mixture of the centrocyte and centroplast without polymorphic reactive cell background, RS-like cells rarely present. Hmm, so what about nodular lymphocyte predominant? 
it always affects adolescents or young adults with present with cervical lymphadenopathy. Classic red Sternberg cells are rare. Variant Hodgkin cells or popcorn cells typically seen. Background consists of an infiltrate of a small non-neoplastic lymphocytes. A neoplastic cell express CD20, CD45, and EMA, but negative for CD15 and CD30. Now, the two doctors become sure that the diagnosis for this case is Hodgkin lymphoma nodular lymphocytes predominant. Based on history and physical examination and the microscopic feature that typically fit. So, what is nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma? It is an common type of Hodgkin lymphoma. It's all about 5% of all the Hodgkin lymphoma. It's called that because it has particular cells that can be seen under the microscope. These are called lymphocyte predominant, but doctors sometimes call them popcorn cells because they look a bit like pieces of popcorn. It is different to other types of Hodgkin lymphoma, tend to grow more slowly and diagnosed earlier, tend to be in the places that can be easily felt rather than deep inside the body. For these reasons, treatment is usually very successful and many people are cured. So finally, Dr. Ahmed came to her to take her permission to start on chemotherapy. But that may be put the baby life in danger, maybe during the anesthesia or the chemotherapy itself. But she refused. After a while, she decided to start chemotherapy. And then the baby died but she continued the therapy with significant improvement every day.